Well, hello, it's Wednesday, so it must be time for Woolly Hats Wednesday Whip. And you find me here back in the garden at home, having come back from our travels. So, what a scorcher, as they say. So that is why I'm sat under the damson tree, keeping cool um, and keeping my nerve. Anyway, so, uh, yes, what have I been up to? I've been doing quite a lot of things. Um, you might have seen that I have posted, yes, all the, the other day, that I got a project out of my to-do bag and uh, found that uh, I've made so many mistakes I've more or less had to undo it. So in the front they have this lovely crocheted um, front so this is one piece of it and then there are about six or seven other bits that you sew together and then you crochet the side and make a nice top. So um, I found that I hadn't followed the instructions um, and done my raised treble the wrong way around uh, and also I'd not I'd shaped one of the tops here so it went up nicely there but I just left it flat there. So the whole of the front is undone so I've almost redone all of the little fancy fancy bits so there's one of them there so you can see it's got used as raised treble to make those nice ridges and there's some lovely popcorn stitches there so that'll do on the side there so there'll be lots of others to go with there interestingly enough I found that um, for all of the sections I had lots of yarn left so obviously doing raised trebles in a different way meant that the tension was all different and um, so uh, it's going to be a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be, which makes sense because the front was looking at turning out bigger than the back. So that solves a lot of problems, doesn't it? So there we go. So I'm busy doing that. So I've nearly finished all those. I've just got the centre panel here, which I'm going to redo. So that will be a little bit smaller when I've finished. And then I sew them up and then I do the sides. So I've nearly done the back, so I don't have to do that. That's not changed. And then I've got the sleeves to do. And what I'm using is, this is lovely um, wool, it's from um, Ripple Crafts, who I visited last year when I was on holiday in um, Scotland in September. Beautiful place, a place called Clactoll uh, in Assint, which is on the west coast of Scotland. With beautiful views over to the islands and, and the sea. Um, and I bought this yarn here, I bought other stuff as well, as you might know. So this is, uh, the colour is called the Greenness of Life. And it fits in, you see it green, almost like the tree behind me, the damson tree. It's 60% wool, 20% yak, and 20% silk, which means it's lovely and soft, but it's also got very good stitch definition, which I thought would be good to use on a crochet project because the detail wouldn't get lost in, um, oh, is that way around there? The detail wouldn't get lost in the stitches. So although it's quite dark and variegated, you can still see great effort I've put in to creating those panels. So lovely wool. So if you go onto the um, uh, Ripplecraft's website you'll be able to find that hand dyed yarn. Um, so she has some lovely stuff. Also does some nice sock yarn as well. She also does um, double knit and Aaron. But this was this is nice and it's going to make a nice lightweight top for summer. Although it might be a bit warm in the coming days. I'll finish it in the coming days. So I also thought I'd like to show you but when I'm doing a project, I like I have lots of project bags, as you can imagine. Over the years, I've collected them from little hessian bags to um, uh, plastic. Well, little there's a little cotton bag here I use for socks. But uh, this one, I'm using this, and this is one I made when I was at school doing domestic science. When I hated domestic science and sewing and knitting, well, we didn't do knitting, uh, but uh, I made this uh, myself, and you can, I don't know whether you can see is my uh, Yule, H Yule, which was my maiden name, and all around the edge there's embroidery, well you could call it that, and even a little hook so I could hang it up, and the idea was that you made this and then you put your your sewing projects in. So they are, a bit of history, still got that, I can't bear to throw it away because it reminds me of those horrible school days I used to have. Anyway, so what else have I been doing? Well, last week while I was um, uh, in Welshpool, in Paris Castle, that's where I was last week when I showed you this on Friday, I briefly showed you my market bag, so I'll give you a bit of a better show. So here's the embryo market bag, and as I showed you before, this is um, a hole there, so not very good for putting things in. So instead, uh, what you do is you create a lemon, so this is very lemony, so this is going to be a lemon, and that will create a lemon, and that will attach to there, and then you can stuff the bag into the lemon. So I thought that'd be quite nice. And the great thing about it is I'm using stash and it's quite a nice portable little project. 
I did do a drawstring, which I promptly found on the lawn here, so I've left it there for the last few days, uh, but now I've lost it again. Anyway, it's only a chain and a little leaf, so I can do that again. So that's what I've been doing there. And then the other thing was, um, yes, I always have a sock on the go. So this is my uh, Mothy and the Squid pomegranate sock yarn there, merino. Um, and that's coming along quite nicely, so that's something I pick up and drop down. So, um, lots of interesting things there. Also this week, all happening this week, I've had a very busy and eclectic day today actually, because I decided as it wasn't so hot this morning I'll go for a run. So some of you may know I did a 10k earlier in the year and then promptly didn't run again for three months, so I started running again and it is quite hard getting back in. So I did a little run today. And then I went on a webinar on um, contraception for squ grey squirrels. Yes, there is such a thing being developed because they cause untold damage, not just to um, a red squirrel population, but also um, trees. And as I now have a few trees you know, in my ownership, I was quite interested in that. So very interesting. Anyway, so the other things happened this week. I've had the arrival of Inside Crochet, which is always good to sit down and have a cup of coffee too. And I read with interest. Um, so this is what you pay your money for, me reading you out things from a magazine. Um, if you're going to East Anglia, there's an East Anglian yarn crawl in Suffolk, Norfolk and Essex, which is quite a large area. I know that because I have been there. Um, also, the, um, the uh, family home of a lot of uh, my ancestors. They are the yours, in fact. Um, so um, to become an official yarn crawler, simply download and print your official passport. And every time you visit a participating shop, get a stamp, you automatically be entered into the shop price draw. Now I think you probably have to buy something when you go to the local yarn store. Um, it would be rude not to, wouldn't it, rather than just whiz around getting a stamp. So if you want to have a, a nosy at that and you're going to East Anglia, it's www.eastanglianyarncrawl, or one word, .co.uk. So there we go. So I'm going to be going to um, Essex in August, see our friends. So I might download that and see where we go. The other thing to highlight is uh, UK Hand Knitting are launching Yarn Stravaganza. Where do they get these names from? Um, in uh, 17th to 24th of September to celebrate local yarn stores. Now I'm a great believer in get local yarn stores. You can get good bargains on the uh, big online sites and things like that but you, you, there's lots of really interesting local yarn stores that specialise in different things so Yarn O'Clock has lots of Welsh wool, black sheep wools in, in cultures have lots of wool anyway. Uh, but there's lots of little wool shops all around the country and they all have a little different aspect. So the idea is to promote the local yarn stores because if we don't use them and, and, and promote them and support them, they will disappear. And then all we'll have to do is buy things online and that's so sad not to be able to squish and feel the yarn before you buy. So that's in September. So get busy with your, your local yarn stores. So um, I did mention in previous um, Woolly Hats Wednesday Whips uh, sorting out my courses, I will be sending out a newsletter this week with all the dates on and I'll give all the people who get the newsletter first dibs and then I'll promote it more widely. So uh, hopefully I'll be seeing some of you again in the autumn. Um, and I think that is all for me at the moment. It's going to be a scorch this weekend. So my advice would be to find a nice damson tree or something like that, sit underneath it with a little bit of gentle knitting or crochet, something that doesn't need a lot of effort, a big glass of uh, uh, fizzy water or water flavoured water or something nice soft drink to drink and then just chill out and forget the hot weather, especially if you don't like it like me because I sort of melt, especially with my colouring. So um, uh, I will see you next Wednesday when, according to the weather forecast, it's going to rain. Uh, have a nice week and I'll see you then. Bye bye.